Als het goed is. Yes. Welcome everybody with a little bit of a delay. Uh, we're finally here. Uh, it's going to start. Uh, we have two very good speakers out of Belgium uh, for you here today. So uh, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're going to kick off with Freek van der Herte. Uh, he also spoke at uh, Laracom EU. Uh, and today he's going to talk about uh, how you can uh, fix bugs faster using Ray. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, half of the work was was getting here already. I'm glad that we already uh, got that sorted. Uh, here I am together with my buddy Frederick. Um, before I start my talk, I want to get the lay of the land uh, a little bit. Uh, who here uses PHP? Okay, that's good. Uh, who here uses Laravel? Oh, that's also uh, good. And is there already somebody who uh, knows Ray and uses Ray? Okay, yeah, <laughs> nice. You're my favorite person in the audience right now. But uh, for the others, I'm going to explain uh, everything to you. I'm going to show you how you can understand and fix bugs faster using a tool uh, called Ray. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner and a developer at a Belgian company called Spasi. I'm active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Meurze. I have a blog, freek.dev, where I write about modern PHP development and Laravel and basically everything that keeps me busy. Uh, next to my day job, I have a side project called Odeer, which is an uptime tracker. And this uh, uptime tracker does not only uh, check your homepage, but it will actually crawl your entire web page and it will notify you when there is a broken link. And together with my uh, colleagues at Spasi, I've built a Flare, which is basically the best exception tracker uh, service for Laravel applications. Um, now, before heading into uh, the talk itself, I want to give you an update on our open source efforts. Uh, we have about 300 packages registered on Packagist. They have uh, now been downloaded 300 million times, and they are being downloaded for close to 20 million downloads a month. Uh, and um, yeah, we're very grateful that the community uh, likes the stuff that we are putting out. Um, you can find a big list of everything we open sourced on our company website. We have a, a open source section there where uh, you can see uh, every package that we've made. And I'm pretty sure there's something there for your next project. Now those packages, they are not entirely free. There is a special license on them called Postcardware, which means that if you use any of our stuff and it gets into your production environment, you are required by law to send us a postcard. And we get, yeah, daily we get postcards. And I should say that the Netherlands are at the number one spot uh, in our country list. But we're still missing yeah, about 200 million postcards. So keep them coming if you haven't sent them yet. Now, we, only, uh, we not only make open source, but uh, also paid products and courses. So if you like what we're doing, uh, go and take a look at our digital products. Now, let's head into the talk itself and talk a little bit about the options that you have uh, for debugging PHP. And basically, these are your options. You can use dump and die debugging. And with that, I mean uh, stuff like uh, the dump function or the print R function or far dump. Everybody has done that. And it's a great way uh, to debug uh, stuff. Uh, but there is also another way, uh, which is called uh, xdebug, which is a step debugger for PHP, which I'm sure that some of you have already used. Now, um, a couple of summers ago, uh, Derek Retans, the creator of Xdebug, uh, tweeted this out, which was a little bit controversial at the time. PHP developers that don't use Xdebug for debugging are amateurs. And I thought, hmm, that's a little bit harshly put. And I don't think it's, it's necessarily true because, yeah, um, I've been paying the bills with PHP for quite some time now, and yeah, I use uh, 
dump and Dianvar dump all over the place. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of other people uh, do so. Now, I know that uh, I know Derek a little bit. Uh, he didn't mean it that hard. He uh, nuanced his statement a little bit. But still, he thinks that uh, dump and die isn't the way you, uh, you should do this. So let's go into the options that you have in a little bit more detail. So here is what Derek likes, xdebug. Uh, with xdebug, you can pause your code, and you can see the entire state of your application at, a, at a one point in time. And it's quite amazing. You can just halt your code, and just by uh, hovering over variables, you can see the content of the variables, you can see the stack trace, it's very handy. Um, with xdebug, you can also uh, do something called step debugging, that uh, is just going to the next line or going to uh, the, the next method, so you can see how the code flows a bit. Yeah, this is, this is all great, but there's yeah, one big thing that I really don't like about xdebug, and that is that it could be hard to install. It's I, in my opinion, or my experience, installing xdebug is a little bit like rushing your, your roulette. You don't know where you're going to end up. Sometimes it just it just works and it takes one minute, and sometimes it takes an hour to uh, to get right. Now let's talk about uh, dump debugging. So using statements like uh, var dump or printr, it's very easy to do. These functions are just available everywhere, and it's just typing the, the, f the, the function there, executing your code, and you can basically see uh, the contents of that. And it allo also allows you to see the state of your uh, for your application in multiple points in time. What do I mean uh, with this? Imagine that you are um, debugging a some kind of loop, which takes like 10 iterations or something. Then you could just put a dump statement in the beginning of the loop, execute your code, and then you would see all iterations at the same time. And that's something that's a little bit harder to do with xdebug. Now, there are also yeah, some bad things um, with dumb debugging. Um, imagine that you're outputting some kind of HTML page, and uh, you put a var dump statement in there, and you want to see what is the output uh, for that. Just by having like a var dump in there, it could break your HTML page uh, in in some in some strange ways. The output may be somewhere in in a, in a in a diff in the top uh, in the top right corner, or maybe your whole um, layout would break. It's a little bit cumbersome there, and it can also get a little bit confusing. When running uh, a code that has a uh, dump statement multiple times, imagine that you're debugging a um, some kind of CLI command, and you run it multiple times, then it can be a little bit difficult to see, yeah, where does, what did I change here? Where does this output belong to? And there are also some ugly things about uh, dump debugging. Uh, I'm sure that some of you might have had this problem as well. Uh, imagine that you had like a uh, hard to track bug and um, you've put a lot of debug statements in various files. And uh, something that, that I sometimes do is um, yeah, dump the string here or something. And I fixed it, so now I'm going to remove everything, but I forget where I have put that one. And it's, it's sometimes hard to track down where did I put my debugging statements. Even if you think you've all removed them and you didn't, you might commit one of them, push them to production, and now yeah, you have a debug statement in your production environment, and you might be exposing some sensitive information. And this is all something that doesn't necessarily happen every time, but there's like a risk that you forget to um, uh, remove a debugging statement. So there are two options, the dump and, and die debugging, and we have xdebug. But I was thinking, couldn't we have like the dump debugging without all of um, all of the downsides? So I only want like the advantages of dump debugging. And I thought, 
okay, let's make something that is in between dump debugging and, and X debug. And that's something that is, uh, that is called Ray. Ray is a uh, beautiful desktop application. And you, when uh, you've installed the Ray library in your project, then you can use the Ray function to send your debugging information to that specific window. And whereas with normal uh, die and dump debugging, you would just dump strings or booleans or in integers or something. Using Ray, you can um, send entire mails to that. You can see the queries that your uh, code performs. You can even pause your code uh, without having to install an extension and much more. Now, it's a uh, paid uh, piece of software. More on that later. But there is a free trial. Now, I want to uh, show it to you because I have already talked a lot, but I believe that to convince people that it's something, you should just show them stuff. So I've prepared like a little demo project here. It's a, uh, it's a Laravel application, and I'm using just artisan commands uh, to show you stuff. Um, I'm using artisan commands because I can execute this easily. I can just call the Ray function here and give it stuff. But you should imagine when I type Ray here just in the command that you type Ray somewhere in your application. You're trying to, to debug something. Okay, let's take a look at Ray itself. So I've said that Ray is a beautiful desktop application. This is uh, how it looks like. And by default, it just uh, takes <coughs> the, uh, the top so uh, even if you're in full screen in another application, Ray will still be on top. And we have like uh, hotkeys to show and, uh, and hide it. OK, how do you send uh, something to Ray? Well, it's uh, very simple. You just give it whatever you want to send to Ray. So hi, everybody. Let's demo this. Let's, oh, let's run this. Uh, this command, and you can see that we see hi everybody uh, here. Um, you also notice that we also mention uh, where we have logged this. So if I'm in another file and I want to see where did this get logged, I can just click it and I go to where uh, that uh, that log was was produced. Now this can take everything that you want. You can just give it an integer if you want. You can also give it uh, an array if you want. Uh, you can even give it large objects, such as the, uh, the Laravel application object. And let's see what happens. And sure enough, we get all of that output here. So here we have hi, everybody, that one. We have that array, which is collapsible. And we have uh, the application uh, object here, uh, which yeah, is a quite large object. Now, you can already see here, I've um, uh, executed this multiple times, and it's already hard to tell like, from which invocation came which output. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we could just clear our outputs before um, we, uh, we lock something again? You can do that with the new screen command. So if you get a new screen here, and let's make it a little bit shorter by just removing that app. And if I run the demo now, then you can see that the screen uh, was cleared, and I only see the, uh, the last output. Let's maybe make it a little bit more clear by uh, uh, adding the date time here. So here you can see the date time now, and now we're a second later. So you always know that this output came from, uh, from the last invocation. Now, you can also imagine that if you um, have a lot of debugging output, that it still can be, can be confusing. I don't know if you've, you've ever done this. Um, if you have like some debugging output, uh, like I am here or something, and you have like uh, lots, of, lots of them there, and you really want to know, hey, where am I here? Sometimes what, what I did was like, uh, I am here, so that it's a little bit uh, more in your face that you can immediately visually, 
visually show it. Now with Ray, we can, we can do better uh, with that. We can give these uh, little, um, little lines some color. So if I just have something here, hello, and I have, let's make this a little bit uh, smaller. I have uh, hello two here. Maybe I want to something important in, in the middle or something. I can make this red just by chaining red to that. So let's do the demo again. And now you can see that we have like a red color. So it immediately stands out uh, between the rest. I can yeah, use uh, some other colors as well. So we can have green here. So we can yeah, make uh, those things pop out. We also have a couple of color filter here. Uh, color filters here. So if you only want to see like the green items, you can just uh, activate this one or only the uh, red items and you can activate this one. And this can be handy when yeah, using a lot of uh, debugging output to just filter out the things uh, that, uh, that you need there. Um, for uh, people that uh, are preferring uh, dark mode, we have uh, dark mode so I can just put this in dark mode and you can see that we have like a lovely uh, dark window here. But I'm a fan of, oh, not update, I'm a fan of the light, so I'm going to use the uh, light theme here back again. Okay. Um, is there something else I want to say about basics here? Um, no, I think that is uh, it for like the basic things. But this is where we're just getting started. Ray can do a whole lot more. Um, there we have um, some framework, uh, some framework uh, specific packages, and I'm happy to tell you that the Laravel specific package is one of the most feature rich uh, that we have. Um, let's maybe go, for instance, to the log command here. So I'm going to get a new screen. I'm going to send something to Ray here. And then I'm going to send something to uh, the log via, via the facade. So if I execute this command, then you will see that whatever gets written in the log also automatically uh, gets in the Ray window, which can be very uh, handy. Because more, uh, most likely, if you have log statements in your code, they already tell you something about what is happening in your code. Um, and I don't know if you know that, but by default, Laravel will also um, write every mail that your application sends to the application log, because the default uh, mailer uh, in Laravel is the, the log driver. So let's see what happens if I uh, send a mail from my, uh, my Laravel application. Let's run this. Then you can see that yeah, we see the mail here right in uh, right in Ray. You can see here that it's notified also that it's a, a mail. Um, you see the subject, the two, and all these links here, they work as well. And this is great for, um, uh, yeah, when you're a little bit out of debugging, but into testing. When you want to test something like your uh, password reset flow or something, you can just send the mail uh, from your code uh, click here and see and see that it works. I think I have a link here now behind spasi.de. Uh, yeah, so you can just use this to to test out the mails in your application. Okay, let's do another one. So we have here. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller. We have here the the query command. So what you can do with Ray is not only uh, give it some stuff but you can also yeah, call some special uh, methods on it. And one of them is called show queries. And whenever you call show queries, from that moment on, every query that your Laravel application will execute uh, will be written in, uh, in Ray itself. And this can be very handy when you want to know like uh, which uh, queries get performed by a specific piece of code. You can just turn it on where you want to see it and turn it off where you don't want to see it anymore. So that's a little bit different uh, from something like the Laravel debug bar where you see like all the queries, but it can be hard to see like from, from, uh, from this piece of code, 
I only want to see the queries uh, from there. So let's uh, check this out. So let's run the query command here. And here you can see that we uh, we got uh, the queries. Uh, so we uh, performed this one, we performed that one. You can see the connection name and you can see how much uh, time that uh, that it took. And this is yeah something that I use a lot. It's it's uh, it's very handy. Another thing uh, that we can do is pass your code, and without any without using any extension. Let me show you that. So this is the demo of uh, of the pass. So I'm going to clear the screen, then I'm going to pass, and this will not not happen because the the code is passed. And you will also see the command hanging here. So let's try that out. So let's pause. And you can see here that we now have uh, the little dialog to see if my code uh, should, uh, should continue or not. You can see we don't see after the pause and our command is, st is still hanging. Let's click continue. And now we see after the pause and our command has ended. And I want to emphasize again that we don't use any extension at all for this. This is uh, just PHP. Now, why could pausing uh, code be handy? This can be very uh, handy to uh, test like side effects uh, of your code. Imagine that you have like a loop and in the loop you make an uh, API call or maybe you want to store something in the database and you want to see like uh, what, it, what the state is after each loop. Then you can just put like a pause in the beginning in the of the loop and just go through each case uh, one by one. That is just one use case. There are lots of places where you'll find that pausing uh, the code is very, very handy. Now, you might think, um, uh, yeah, how does this work? And does anybody have any idea how we could make this work with, with just PHP? It's, it's laughably easy, really. <laughs> it's running a while loop with a sleep in it. And um, how it works is that in that while loop, um, we put the sleep for a second. And after every second, the Ray application will call the, um, or the Ray package inside of your project, will call the Ray application and it will ask, should I still pause? And if it still pauses, yeah, then we go into another loop. And if the Ray application says, you don't have to pause anymore, yeah, then we just continue. And voila, we have a pausing functionality without, uh, yeah, without any, any extension. And of course, whenever we want to stop running the code, then we just uh, throw an exception that, uh, uh, to, 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 stop, uh, to stop the code. That's how that works. Okay. Let's take a look at which one we also have. Ah, yeah, this is also a good one. Uh, basically, you can see here in this application, I have like, this is my test application where I test Ray with. Uh, and you can see for each um, functionality, I have a command here. And don't worry, you're not going to do them all. Uh, I'm also uh, only going to show a couple here. So what you can also do is measure performance uh, using Ray. So how does that work? So in this command, we're first going to clear the screen. Then we are going to call Ray measure. And when you call measure for the first time, that's when we are going to start measuring uh, the time. Then we are going to uh, sleep. Uh, and then we're going to call measure again. And when we call measure again, then we are going to see the time between this measure call and that measure call. And then we're going to sleep again. We're uh, going to do another measure. And then we're uh, going to see yeah, the, the different times between those. And this is like yeah, very handy to see quickly the performance of a piece of code. I'm sure that uh, we've all at some point yeah, just uh, took the timestamp in the code. And then uh, we take this timestamp again. And then we uh, subtract it. The previous timestamp. We all do that. Well, now Measure does that for you. It, it also does that under under the hood, so you don't have to anymore. Okay, let's uh, try this out. So let's measure here. 
start measuring performance. And you can see that the, the, the very first time um, yeah, we start measuring performance, then the, first, uh, the second time that we had a measure, then were uh, uh, one second uh, runtime. And here, uh, the third measure call, we have three seconds runtime because of the uh, one plus two. And as a bonus, you also see the uh, maximum uh, memory usage that uh, we used while running this code. So yeah, I think this is uh, this is very handy. Um, let's see what else um, I want to show you. Ah, let's let's show something something else cool that isn't in uh, in these commands. So how you install that um, Ray uh, function is uh, by just using uh, the uh, spacy Laravel Ray package. And you can keep it installed because it does a check in uh, in which environment uh, that it is, and in if it doesn't see like hey there's a Ray application running, then it won't do an anything. So it's safe to just push this to production if you want, because it won't output anything in uh, in production. Now, if you push it to production, can you see still see those Ray, Ray calls? And the answer is yes, because Ray also works over remote connections. So let's try that out. So I already have prepared something, and I'm going to use the server of my blog for this. I've already prepared a little thing here in the Ray directory. And it's a simple script. So if I take a look at the index.php there, you can see that I just uh, require the autoloader because uh, we have used uh, Ray as a package here. Um, we're going to do a Ray high there, and that's basically, basically it. So what you need to do in Ray is uh, define the server, and I've already done that here, and just connect to the server. And now uh, we are listening for Ray calls on the server. So let's um, uh, run this uh, little script here and see what happens. And you see that a new window pops up, and you can see that this is the output from fake.dev, and this is the output from hi there in the index. Uh, dot uh, PHP uh, 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 file on line uh, number five. So you can use this um, to yeah, easily debug yeah, some small stuff on your server without the risk of exposing any information uh, via the web. How this works is that um, Ray opens also an SSH connection on a different port and all information is getting sent securely via that. It's not that we use like regular HTTP uh, for this at all. And of course, you can uh, use any uh, method uh, that you want here. So if you um, yeah, want to make this a, a little bit more important, uh, then you can uh, make this one red. And if we uh, execute it, then, then it's red. So you can use any function uh, that you want here. Um, let's see. What is the next thing that I have to explain? Ah, another fun thing. So um, I have this uh, little application here called uh, Code Runner, and I use that to run small bits of code that, um, yeah, that I don't necessarily want to write in a file. It's just for testing stuff out. And you might also have like a PHP project somewhere where yeah, you don't want to install the package in. Because right now, I've, se I've uh, uh, let you see that uh, we've always used a Ray package in the uh, application itself. So if I go to Laravel Ray here, you can see here that I installed it here. But having to install Ray in every project can be a little bit cumbersome as well. And we have a solution for that. So let me show it to you. So if I go to Code Runner here, and let's uh, uh, dump something here. Hello, Netherlands. And let's run this. You can see that we have a fatal error. Ray uh, doesn't exist. 
because yeah, we don't include anything. There's there's nothing here. Now, how uh, can we make the ray function available here? Well, there's uh, a little package uh, that I've made. Let me show it to you. Uh, it's on GitHub, and it's called Global Ray. And what Global Ray does is uh, to enable Ray, and as a bonus, you get also get DD and dump in every PHP file on your system, even if you don't have like any dependencies at all there. So let's see that in action. So we have uh, that undefined function here. Let's now uh, install global ray. And uh, truth be told, I've already installed it, so I don't have to require it anymore. So uh, if you need to do that, it's just a composer global way. And then you need to do global ray install. Let's try to do that. Do you wish to install it globally? Yes, I want to do that. I want to do that in that file. Okay, happy debugging, good times. Let's see in Coach Runner here what is happening here. And sure enough, we don't get the error anymore. And let's get uh, Ray also on the screen. You can see, hello Netherlands. So now PHP globally knows this function, which is, yeah, quite handy because now you don't even have to install Ray in your individual projects anymore. Now, how does uh, does that work? Let, let's uh, let's spill the beans uh, on that. So, you uh, might have noticed that here I had to choose a uh, any file of PHP where I want to install it in. Now, let's open up that uh, that PHP file. Ooh, and I did something wrong last time I was here, but let's just open it. And if we uh, take a look and search for prepend here. Ah, then you see here a directive called the auto prepend file, which is a directive that you might not be familiar with. But in auto prepend file, you can uh, set a PHP file that will be loaded before the file that you requested to load. So you can do this to you can use that file to basically define any function uh, that you want, and it will be available everywhere. And that is just what uh, our global uh, ray installer command does. What it what it does is it will set that um, uh, any directive to a file of our own, and here uh, we define the ray functions. Uh, using a far, so it certainly works in your PHP version, but that's a little bit technical. I'm not going to dive into that. But here yeah, is, is all the magic that is happening. And if you want to define like another um, function on your system that uh, needs uh, to be everywhere, yeah, you can just use the auto prepend file yourself as well. That's how that works. Okay, let's... Uh, move away here. Um, let's take a look and go back to the slides. So yeah, this was just a whirlwind tour of uh, of Ray. Um, personally, I use it uh, every day, uh, and yeah, we've been quite successful with convincing people of this. Of this, um, I think we. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but yeah, it's in the in the in the thousands of people that uh, that work with Ray. Um, everything that I've said is also uh, documented on our uh, on our company website. There's a page with like a reference of every uh, Ray function uh, that there is. Uh, if you want to see more little demos, they are available on uh, my Ray. Uh, dot app that is like the promotional uh, page, and uh, to give you a uh, yeah a reward for uh, listening to my talk here, um, we've decided to just uh, give Ray away for free to this audience. So if you use uh, this code uh, on May on my Ray dot app, you will be able to uh, use uh, Ray uh, for free. So that's everything that I had to say about Ray. If you uh, have any questions uh, about it uh, or want to see some stuff in action again, I'm happy to, to show you uh, uh, again. 
Um, Ray has been uh, a labor of, of love, uh, and I'm very glad that a lot of people seem to be uh, liking it. So thank you for uh, your uh, attention and enjoy the rest of the meetup. Thanks. Thank you very much for these uh, loving words at the end. Are there any questions in the audience? Frederick. <laughs> so uh, how would you rate on a scale from not professional to very professional a user who uses Reason? <laughs> <laughs> very professional. I think enterprise architect level. Hey. <laughs> When starting uh, Ray, you you give an, uh, a, a title. Mm -hmm. where, where do you see it uh, in the in the Ray app? Ah, that's a that? that's a good question. I I didn't uh, show you that. Um, uh, let's go back to my little demo command here. So you can have like a new screen here. So let's execute this. If you want to have like a title here, you can just give it to new screen. This is the title. Title like that. Oh, there is no title. Hmm, that is strange. <laughs> hmm, wait, is that something that can be fixed with a restart? Or I otherwise, I'll have to. Hmm, okay, that's a little bug. Yeah, I have to fix that. Sorry about that. Normally, it's just uh, with new screen, and you can just uh, give it uh, give it the title here. I'll get that fixed uh, ASAP. <laughs> Very good spotting uh, the bug. <laughs> yeah. Luckily with Ray you can uh, debug fast. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem for you. Good one. Um, are there any more questions? W when running global Ray, mm -hmm. Um, so it gets imported in every file, right? Yeah. But then if you have legacy code or something and you use it, then you can't push it to production because it would not find the function. Yeah, I, if that case, if you use global Ray, um, yeah, then you shouldn't push those, those Ray calls. If you want to be able to push the Ray calls, you need to install the package itself so that it yeah, comes along on your other environment as well. That's because uh, else that's it will one. give a bug in production. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Or you, you would have to uh, install Global Ray on production as well. That could also yeah. be an option. Uh. And if you install Global Ray, um, or does Global Ray also install Laravel Ray? Uh, no, that's just the framework agnostic version ah of, yeah. uh, of Ray. It yeah. would be cool if it checks if it's, if it's there. Well, it does that. Oh. So you can use global Ray uh, on your system and you get like the framework agnostic Ray functions in every PHP file. But if it detects like we're in a project and we have Laravel Ray, mm -hmm. then it will deactivate itself and it will let Laravel Ray mm -hmm. uh, do its thing. So you have like the best of both worlds. Uh. Oh, cool. Luckily we thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Thank <Thanks>. you. <laughs> okay, then All right. it's time to have uh, a little break. Um, so grab a drink. Uh, get some fresh air. We will be back. We'll, we will be back in 15, 20 minutes or so. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>